Good afternoon. Can you hear me in the back there? Can you hear me? Okay, great. So this is purely voluntarily that you are here and that I'm here actually, okay? And so we're doing a little bit of a review of the last quarter of the lecture series, which is the review from the last midterm to now, or to last Friday. The final will be 48 questions, and if I remember, it's five points per question, so you get a total of 240 points. And it's all multiple choice, but doesn't mean anything because you need to do lots of, uh, not lots, some calculations, okay? All right, so in the first lecture after the midterm, we discussed acid bases, and we defined acid bases, and in aqueous solution, an acid is a proton donor, okay? It gives a proton, a hydrogen ion, to the base, and the base is the acceptor. The two substances are related by the transfer of a proton. They are called conjugate acid-base pairs. So if you have an acid here, let's say that's a strong acid. What signifies a strong acid? It's completely dissociated, 100% dissociated. The Ka of that acid is what, large or small? Very large, okay, much larger than one, all right? Of course, if you have weak acids, the Ka is smaller than one, very often much smaller than one, okay? And it's not completely dissociated, so that's the difference. So generally, an acid-base equilibrium is you have an acid HA, this is that acidic proton or hydrogen ion, and you have a base. And base can be, for example, water. Water can act as an acid and a base. And the base will take that proton off the acid, and with this, the acid will become itself a base, its conjugate base, all right? And the base is then an acid, because it has now the proton. It's its conjugate acid. The, the conjugate acid of this base is this here, okay? So, it's on, it's in, and it's not working. Oh, tells me something. Give me a second. I don't want to do this all by hand. Okay, so we have here our equilibrium. See, as I said earlier, now a bit a little more, more specific. Water can act as a base. This is the acid. In this case, we say it's a strong acid. And this proton goes over to here, and that base becomes now H3O+. Plus. The water becomes H3O+, plus, the conjugate acid. And the acid ha has now its conjugate base. That's the A-, minus. that's the acid anion. And with this, you can formulate an acidity constant. We talked about it just right now. If the constant is very, very large, much larger than one, it's the concentration of this here times the concentration of the H3O plus divided by the concentration of the HA. This does not go in the equilibrium. We can write one in your equilibrium here, in your constant, all right? Because it's a pure solvent. And even if it reacts with it. So that means if this is large here, this side here, then Ka is large. So that means strong acids, they are all the equilibrium, as we say, leisurely on the right side with the product. The same is true for a base. What does a base? It takes protons from an acid. Now the water can act as an acid, so it gives a proton to the base. With this, the proton becomes its the base becomes its conjugate acid, BH plus, okay? When you see something like this, you always know that's an acid. All right, BH plus, okay? And so now the acid itself has uh, uh, given away a proton, so there's one O and one H left. That's OH minus. And this shows you that's the conjugate base, and OH minus is essentially a base, also uh, will react basic. With this, you can have a base constant, concentration of this, times concentration of this, divided by concentration of this. So if you have a strong base, that constant would be very large, right? Okay. 
So make sure that you understand that. Now, there's nothing to it when you do a titration of, of a strong acid uh, with a strong uh, base. Okay, this would be a strong acid, which I titrate 0.1 molar HCl, I titrate with 0.1 molar OH minus, some kind of a base. And so at the beginning, if I have 0.1 molar HCl, what's the pH? One. So that's the log of 0.1 is minus one times uh, plus minus, times minus one is one, okay? So we titrate this, where will the equivalence point will be? When you have all those guys here, all those guys are titrated away with the OH minus, the concentration is then equal at this point, and it will be a pH of seven, nothing but seven, all right? And then you keep adding base, and at the end, you get essentially 2.1 molar uh, base, if you don't account for the dilution, all right? And the same is true if you have a 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution, that's a strong base. What's the pH of a 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution? What's the pH of a 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution? Anybody? 13. I heard you. <laughs> okay. It's 13, all right? And uh, so you start out at point And what's the pH of a one molar sodium hydroxide solution? What? Point 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. What is that? Should it be very low or very high? Okay, basic. So what is it? 14, okay, all right. All right, so acid, uh, water can act as an acid and the base at the same time. So the acid becomes its conjugate base and the base becomes its conjugate acid. And with this, you can have a, the iron product or the constant for this here. The equilibrium constant, we call it the water constant, Kw, concentration of this times concentration of that, this times that, divided by water is the pure solvent, one and one. So Kw is H3O plus, plus OH minus concentration. What is that value at uh, 25 degrees Celsius? 10 to minus 14. If I write it in this direction, from right to left, if I reverse that equation, what's the value? 10 to the 14. 1 over 10 to the minus 14, okay? Now this is that value at 25, so with this we can do a pKw, we take the log of this, what is that? So this is the log of this, is what? Minus 14, we multiply with minus one, we have pKw. And now comes the important part, the concentration, since the concentrations are equal here, you can put this over here, this equals that concentration and this equals Kw, with this the concentration, the, the concentration of this is the square root of Kw, okay? The square root of Kw, 10 to minus 14, square root is 10 to minus 7, okay? What's the pH at, at this concentration? What's the pH? And what's the POH? Okay, pH plus POH is pKw, all right? I have a... Hundred smaller sodium hydroxide solution. What is the pH? So what's the pOH? Hundred smaller. It's ten to minus two, isn't it? So what's the pOH? Twelve. Okay. The pOH is twelve. So you take the log of minus twelve. That is uh, ten to minus twelve is minus twelve. Multiply with minus one. So that's twelve. That's the pOH is twelve. What's the pKw? 14. With this you get the pH. pH is 14 minus 12 is, what is it? 2, okay. Is that what I ask you? What's the? 100 molar sodium hydroxide solution is not pH 2, okay. What is it? 
POH is 2, exactly, and the PKW is 14 minus 2. That was, we decided this is 2, so PKW is 14, uh, PH is PKW is 14 minus 2, okay? All right. But did you get it, or did I totally confuse you? You're confused? <coughs> You're confused? You're confused. Okay. Now, if I have a pH of 2, I want to know what the POH is. What's the POH? 14 minus 2, okay? So what's the POH? Then 12, all right? We are not really interested in the POH. I have a 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. What's the POH? What's the POH? Now, what's the POH? Huh? One, okay. So 0.1 is 10 to minus 1. I take the log of it, is minus 1. I multiply it with minus 1. So I have 1. So that's the POH. So what's the pH? Is 14 minus POH. So what's the pH? 13, okay. Bases always have pHs much larger than 7, all right? Good. All right, PO, pH is POH is, is 7 here in this case. All right. So now you have to think. I just talked for a long time about the concentration of H2O in water. Okay, that's the concentration of H2O in water. Which of the following solutions has the highest pH? Take your clickers out. There's no points or anything. I just want to know how many people are here. And if you don't have a clicker, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand later. So what's the highest pH? A 1,000 molar sodium hydroxide solution, a millionth molar HCl solution, or a trillionth molar HCl solution. All right, so I give you one minute. Don't go in the trap. Oh, 137, 142. Thanks for coming. I don't have to t have monologues here. Hmm. pH concept is not clear. Hmm. Okay. So let's talk about this a little bit more. What's the pOH of 10 to minus 3 molar pOH 10 to minus 3 molar sodium hydroxide? What's the pH? Good. What's the pH of a 10 to minus 6 molar HCl? Six. Good. Now, don't answer. What's the pH of a 10 to minus 12 molar HCl? What's the pH of water? What's the concentration of H2O plus in water? The concentration of H2O plus in water, what is it? 10 to minus 7 moles. How many orders of magnitude is 10 to minus 12 smaller than 10 to minus 7? Five orders of magnitude. There's five zeros afterwards, and then comes this thing here, okay? So you wouldn't notice this in water because it's so dilute. So the pH of this actually would be 7, all right? It's not 10 to minus 12. Ten to mi the pH of water is al alone 7, and this is 10 to minus 7 moles water. Add this plus the 10 to minus 7 moles water, you still have 10 to minus 7 moles, okay? So this one we did. 10 to minus 11, so pH 11. This we did also, that's clear, 10 to the 6, minus 6, 6. And this is the one, it's not <laughs> 12, okay? Uh, 
So the HVO plus is, is not 10 to minus 12, HVO plus then there is 10 to minus 12, the concentration, but this is not de determining the pH. So you have your water has HVO plus of 10 to minus 7. So this is five orders of magnitude smaller than this. So this will be the pH uh, of the solution here. So you have hardly anything in there. Okay, so pH you need to know, like so many other things. Did I talk about, there will be about 16 questions from this last, the fourth part of the lecture series, and 16 and about 40, 42 from the previous three ones, okay? So it's 48 questions, you have three hours, it's just like in the midterms, but you have a little bit more time now, all right? So, <coughs> so if you have water, water, or any, any conjugate acid base pair, so this would be, aha, uh -huh, we're talking now about weak acids. Weak acids, I have HAC, I always write this as a weak acid. HA, I write as a strong, HAC, this is acidic acid, for example, is a weak acid. Weak acid, the K is larger than one, how much larger than one, or smaller than one? Smaller than one, very much smaller than one. 10 to minus five, 10 to minus four, molar, even smaller than that, okay? And so you can write, this is your weak acid, so where's the equilibrium if you throw 0.1 molar weak acid in water? Where's the equilibrium? It's all on the left side because the acidity constant is so small. It's about 10 to minus 5, something like this. It's all on the left side. So I have very little of this here, okay? But nevertheless, you can write HVO plus times AC minus is divided by this concentration, and this is 1, is your acidity constant, okay? Now... The point is then if you have a weak acid, the weak acid makes this weak acid anion, okay? The AC minus. And that AC minus reacts with water. So let's assume you titrate this, okay? You titrate this with sodium hydroxide solution, strong sodium hydroxide solution. Now, the sodium hydroxide, the OH will go with the HVO to make water, okay? And with this, you will make more of this. You titrate this away, you make more of this. You make more of this, okay? Until this is all gone. Until it's all uh, dissociated to the right side. So since you titrated this, this would be then neutral. You would have the HVO and NOH would be the same here. But this one, if I start this with 0.1 molar, what's the concentration of this here? At the... When I, at the equivalence point. What's the concentration of this? I have converted all this to this here. Isn't that right? So if this was 0.1 molar, what's that concentration? 0.1 molar. Okay, good. So now this here reacts again with water. But now it's a base, okay? So it wants to take a proton from the water, and it takes that proton and makes undissociated acid at the, new at the equivalence point, it makes this undissociated acid and it makes OH minus. So what would be, would be the pH 7 at the equivalence point or would it be low 7? Below 7? Would it be below 7? Or above 7? Who is for above 7? Of course you have this OH minus now that brings it above 7. All right, with this you can formulate a KB constant. So this is a conjugate acid base pair. So that's the acid, that's the acid, and that's the conjugate base, okay? So you have here, that is, the, is now the base here. The base wants that proton, that proton, and makes the acid. So the base is the concentration of this, base constant is the concentration of this times the concentration of this divided by the concentration of this here, all right? So if you multiply for a conjugated acid base pair, Ka with Kb, you get Kw, okay? So if you have a Ka, but you need the Kb, you can calculate it. You know what Kw is. Kw is 1 times 10 to minus 14, okay? So you would divide this then. Uh, Ka divided, uh, Kw divided by Ka gives you Kb, for example, all right? So if you have one number, you have the other one. Okay, and the same is true, of course, if you have a base pair. And I would be very carefully looking at this equilibrium here, all right? 
So you have NH3 is the base, okay? And it takes a proton from here and makes its conjugate acid, NH4+, plus, NH4+, plus, plus OH-, minus, okay? And that NH4+, plus, if you titrate now to its strong acid, for example, at the beginning, you have very little of this here. When you put this in water, you have very little of this, so your pH is pretty high, okay? And then you start titrating this with a, a strong acid. That's a weak base. You titrate this with strong acid. So you neutralize this with H3O plus to make water. With this, you're pulling this out of the equilibrium, so we'll make more of this, and you will make more of this, and we'll make more, more of this. At the equivalence point, you have converted all this to this here. If I have 0.1 molar am uh, ammonia, okay, what's the concentration of NH4 at the equivalence point? 0.1 molar, okay? And with this, you can calculate the base, can get the ca base constant is the concentration of this times the concentration of this divided by the concentration of this, all right? So now, just like with the acid, now this time it's the cation, the NH4 plus, at the equivalence point, reacts with water. So it continues to react with water, and then it makes, so what is this now? This is the acid, and this is the base here. So it pulls that proton off and makes H3O plus plus NH3. So the equivalence point, if I have a strong base and I titrate it with a strong acid, the equivalence point is 7. But not if I have a weak base and I titrate it with strong acid. Because now I'm having this extra H3O+. Plus. So would that be below 7 or above 7? Below 7, okay? The equivalence point is below 7. And again here, Kb times Ka is Kw. If you know one, you can get the other one because you know that here and you can get the, uh, the Ka, for example. Okay, so we want to do a titration of a weak acid with a strong base, or a weak base with a strong acid. And I have explained to you this many times how this titration looks like. So there are several points. At the beginning of that, so this is the pH here, and this is the amount of OH minus standardized uh, base, strong base that I'm adding, okay? So at the beginning, I have not added any base, so I want to calculate what is the pH of that concentration in solution, all right? So let's say we have 0.1 molar acetic acid. 0.1 molar acetic acid, is that a strong acid or a weak acid? Weak, okay. So if it, it would be a strong acid, what would be the pH? One, okay, good. But it's not a strong acid, it's a weak acid, so it doesn't completely dissociate. It doesn't make enough H3O+. Plus. So this is what you have here. You have H3O+, plus, plus acetate minus. And at the beginning, you have not titrated at all. This goes into equilibrium, but the equilibrium constant is very small. So where is the equilibrium? Is it more on the left side? Is it most on the left side, or is it most on the right side? Who is for left? It's on the left side, of course, because the equilibrium constant is so small. If you take the equilibrium constant, it's this concentration times this concentration divided by this concentration, and this is a very small number. That means that number must be very small, very large, very large, okay? So we want to calculate that pH without any titration. We have a 0.1 molar solution. So this dissociates in HVO plus and AC minus. Stoichiometric factors are the same. So we say this is x and that is x. So then if this is the initial amount, x amount must have dissociated from this, okay? So that's 0.1 minus x. And since that x is very, very small because of that very, very small constant, I say 0.1 minus x is about 0.1. So with this I say the equilibrium constant, I make x squared, x times x, so the uh, product concentration, times the product concentration is x squared, divided by 0.1, I said that minus x, but the minus x we forget, is this number here, all right? We just, we do that equilibrium constant. And so now I bring this 0.1 over here, so x squared is 0.1 times 1.76 times 10 to minus 5, all right? 
So it is 1.76 times 10 to minus three, uh, 6. One, so now I want to get x, so I take the square root out of 1.76 times 10 to minus 6, and with this I get 1.33 times 10 to minus 3, and this is in moles per liter. So now I want to get the pH. How do I get the pH of this? This is x here. This is HVO plus. That's the concentration of HVO plus. How do I get the pH from this? You take the logarithm and that times negative times minus 1, and this gives you 2.88. All right. So now we're going to come to the next point. The next point is this point, the equivalence point. And this is a real kicker, OK? So you've got to be very careful when you calculate this, because something happens. As I have explained to you, so you make at, at the equivalence point, you have converted all this stuff here to this here, OK, completely. So if this was 0.1 molar before, at the equivalence point, what's the concentration of that? 0.1 molar, OK? Now this is 0.1 molar minus x, because this makes this reacts with each other, makes OH minus and HAC. So this is the chromatic factors are the same. With this, I can do the same thing. But now I have a base equilibrium, OK? I take x times x, which is this concentration times this concentration, x squared divided by this concentration is 0.1 minus x. And I know that base constant is 5.68 times 10 minus 10 is, is a very small constant, extremely small. So with this one, this will really not matter. I say x squared divided by 0.1 is 5.68 times 10 to minus 10, or x squared is 5.68 uh, times 10 to minus 11. So if I take the square root of this, then I get the x. The square root is... Uh, 7.5 times 10 to minus 6. So what is x? x is OH minus and HAC. I want to know the pH. So how do I get to the pH? What's, anybody has a calculator? What is that if I take the log of this? Anybody? What's the log? This for you. Negative 5 point, yeah, the log is negative 5.12. And so that's then the POH is what? 5.12. So what is the pH now? <laughs> 14 minus, 14 minus 5.12 is 8.88. Did you get it? Good, excellent, yes. Um, I don't know if you can assume this, but I don't want to get you through a uh, solving of a quadratic equation. I think that's not point of the, the exercise, okay? The exercise, if you see that they are this small, these constants, you can assume it, yeah, okay? If you have extra time, you could make the full uh, calculation, but I think it's not part of you to know quadratic equations in, in the chemistry <laughs> test, all right? So, now... Now you have to be extremely careful. Listen very carefully. You need to know all this with bases, all right? Listen very carefully. We made one assumption here, that this is still 0.1. But we have titrated this, OK? We started out with this here. This was 0.1 molar. There's nothing wrong with that, OK? So this is a number of moles. You can have a number of moles. The number of moles will not change, OK? The number of moles here will be the same number of moles here after this is all converted, all right? And th this is the number of moles. But what has changed is you took 100 milliliters or 25 milliliters or some kind, let's say 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar uh, sodium hydroxide solution, OK? You titrated this sodium hydroxide in there, and you had 100 milliliters of acetic acid before, OK? So now at the equivalence point, you needed 100 milliliters to get to the equivalence point. So suddenly, you have the same amount of moles that you had here. That was the number of moles, not moles per liter. You have this now in double the volume. What will this do to your concentration? We'll have the concentration. So this would be then 0 0.05, okay? That's where you can make a big mistake. This would be 0.05 because 
you actually did a titration. As I explained it to you, I sort of ignored that we added something in there. Yeah? So you need to go from this concentration, from this concentration here, and from this concentration. You need to recalculate what this concentration is. Sure, it's these number of moles are this here at the equivalence point. But you have it now in a different volume, OK? So you need to correct for that volume. And if you correct for this, if we took 100, had 100 milliliters and we added 100 milliliters, now we have it in the double the volume. If it was 0.1 before, but now 0.1 moles uh, per liter. And so that was, th now what is it, the concentration if you have double the volume? 0 0.05, okay? So make no mistake about this, all right? So you can calculate your pH. That will make a difference in your pH, of course, all right? Not a big one, but it will make a difference. So, and then we have region C. We did region C already, okay? And then we have the region, the buffer region here, or you have a buffer region here. That's the same thing if you have a weak base. You titrate the weak base, you can ca uh, uh, calculate that point. You calculate that point. So would that be more, would this be below seven or above seven, that point, in this uh, titration? What was this here? <laughs> this, is the, this is the acid, weak acid titrated with a strong base. It's above. Now this is a weak base titrated with a strong acid. What is it? Below, below exactly, below. And this is the buffer region, and buffers are Solutions that resist pH change. They contain both a weak acid and its conjugate base in equal amounts. Weak acid and its conjugate base in equal amounts. So this was our, um, let's look at this here. This is the weak acid, and that's the, what's the conjugate base? That's the conjugate base here, okay? So. A buffer has HAC, that would be an acidic buffer, and the acetate ion, all right? So the pH is the pKa of your acid, the weak acid, plus the log of the acid, uh, uh, concentration of AC minus divided by HAC. This is nothing else. I just reformulated the equilibrium constant for that acid. I just shoveled it around. And suddenly, instead of H2O plus, I call this pH here, and the logarithm is this, the pKa, and this is pH. So this would be, let's see, where is that equation? Let's do that equation. Um, I, I don't know, it's at the very beginning. Here, let's see. Okay, there it is, okay. Um, where is it? Okay. Here it is, okay. So if I <coughs> take this, take the log of this here, yeah? And I take this out. So I have log Ka plus, and this log, or minus log uh, H2O2 plus, plus log AC minus divided by HAC. Can you see that? All right, I take, I K, say Ka, okay? Or I say it this way. I, I bring this over Ka times I multiply this over HAC divided by AC. Is that right? Is H2O, okay? Now I take the log of H2O, that would be log of Ka, all right? And plus the log of HAC divided by AC would be here, yeah? Now I multiply this with, with minus one and I get this equation here, okay? pH is pKa plus log of HC minus divided by HAC. This is your henderson hasselbalch equation, and it will tell you how to calculate the pH. So you take a weak acid and its conjugate base, that's the salt. So you take acetic acid in this case and sodium acetate, and you mix that at equal concentrations, all right? And if you have this, so this is essentially, you are half here at the half equivalence point. Half of this, has, this has converted to half of that at, the, at this half equivalence point. You see that? Okay. And so if you are here, what de de dominates? So this is smaller than one. This quotient is smaller than one because you are have more of this and less of this. This is this side. And that's called the base form. 
you have more of this and less of this. You're approaching more and more uh, dissociation, complete dissociation. Okay? So the half equivalence point gives you your pKa. Okay? And if half equivalence point, the pH is the pKa. All right? Good. So this is the third point that we, is important. So adding acid to a buffer converts the stoichiometric amount of base to the conjugate acid. So it has, of course, some effect towards pH because I have this hugely magnified here, but it's a very small, it withstands pH changes when you add acid or base, all right? So you also can dilute, so the good range for a buffer is about from 0.1, this ratio, 0.1 to 10, something like this, okay? That gives you a pH plus minus 1, all right? So the pH is pKa, plus minus 1 is the useful range. So, and when you dilute a buffer, you dilute it by, let's say, a factor of 10. That's what I did here. You diluted both of them, it really doesn't matter. You still have the AC minus and the HAC there, and it will still work. The buffer will still work. So the buffer range is about a from 0.1 to 10, all right? So this gives you plus minus 1 pK, uh, pH unit. So now we talk, so we did that. So then we talked about polyprotic acids. They have more than one proton, the protic, polyprotic, more protons, more than one proton. And they have also more than one Ka because the first proton, this is for example carbonic acid. I would look at carbonic acid if I would be you, and I omitted the H2O here, H2O plus H2CO3 gives. Okay, that proton goes to the H2O and makes H3O plus, and this is HCO3 minus. And this has an equilibrium constant. That equilibrium constant is 10 to the minus 6.37, or the pKa is 6.37, all right? So the pKa tells you, when the pKa, this and this is in equal concentrations. If you have the pH equals the pKa, this and this is in equal concentration. Is this clear? You get it? All right. So <coughs> that means that if you're below the pH of the pKa, so that would be, if that would be the pKa here, if you're below in pH, on which side are you? Are you more to the reactant side or more to the product side? To the reactant side, exactly. So most of the prot protons would be on here. If I have a pH of 2, do I have any of those here? pH of 2? No. I got a key to have a 50-50 rate. I have to go up to pH 6.37. All right? How about pH of 3? Do I have any of this here? No. Exactly. I don't have any of this. pH 4. Do I have any of this? pH 5, oh, I get less than 10%, than okay? And pH 6.37, 50% of this is converted to this and this, okay? That's what it means. So if I'm at pH 9, do you have any of this here? No, you are completely converted to this here. All the protons have converted to H3O plus with the water, and you have HCO3 minus. That's the first pKa. And then you have that, that proton can go off too here. That's the second one, reacts with water, plus water, gives H3O plus CO3 2 minus. So if I'm, does this happen if I'm pH of, pH of 7? If I'm a pH of 10.25, this will be equal to that. Now if I'm pH of 12, what will be the prevalent form? CO3 2 minus will be the prevalent form. You have hardly any of this, okay? So you have it all in this form. This is important for you to know when you talk about amino acids and the charge on amino acids. So amino acids are essentially multiprotic acids. They can have different charges at different pHs. So I have here this histidine. This has a CO and this is an OH group here, see? That had a proton which is off at the moment. What pH would I need in order that this proton is completely off? One, two, or three? Who is for three? 
Who is for two? Who is for one? Okay, nobody answers me. Okay, all right. So they are strike. Uh, nothing I can do. So what what pH would I what way pH would that be where I have fifty percent of them are on and fifty percent are off? What is the pH? Two point nine, two point zero. So this one is a COOH. I drawn it as it's gone. If I'm a pH one, is the proton on or off on this compound here? It's on. So if I go to pH 3.9, 50% are off, that is minus, and 50% are on. If I'm at pH 6, is that off, that proton? Okay. So if I'm at pH 6, this is off and this is off. Okay. And this one is NH3+. Plus. Is that an acid or a base? That's an acid. I have a pKa. That's an acid. An extremely weak acid. So to what pH do I have to go to pull that off here, that proton, and then I have NH2 and not plus anymore? What pH do I have to go? 11? What do I have at 10? 50% plus and 50% neutral. Okay? This is always like this. It's NH3 plus. Okay? So why don't you pull out your um, eye clicker, please? And so I have not given you the charges here, all right? I give you the pKa. If I give pKa, that means that's an acid, that means that's an acid, and that means that's an acid, okay? These white ones, they're all hydrogens. You see that? There are three hydrogens here. There's one here. This is not acidic, but this is an acidic hydrogen. These are acidic hydrogens, and this is an acidic hydrogen. So I'm asking you, you now, what is the total effective charge on this amino acid, cysteine, at pH 5? Is it plus 1, the total charge, plus 1, 0, or minus 1? Why don't you think about this? I think you don't need to think about this because we did this a long time ago, not so long time ago. You need to know this stuff. So the pH is 5. I have this in a solution of pH 5. Is that proton on or off? Off. Is that proton on or off? On. Are these proton, is that proton on or off? On, okay. What's the charge here? Okay, what's the overall charge? Who said plus 1? It's wrong. Oh my God. <laughs> There's some serious self study necessary. Okay. So I just said it. I'm at pH of 5. Is that off? <coughs> is that pKa is 2.2? At pH of 2.2, I have 50% on and 50% off. Okay. Now I go higher in pH. Does it come off? Okay. So this is off at pH 5. So what's the charge here then? This is gone. It's minus. So this is pKa 8. I'm at 5. Is that on or off? On. on. So the charge is minus 1 so far, and this is 0. Now this here is an acid. It has 1, 2, 3 hydrogens there, and there's an acid. How can that be an acid? What's missing here? The plus sign. So this is plus, and this is minus. What's the overall charge? Zero. Okay. So the overall charge is zero. And with this. So this is still in its acidic form. This is also in its acidic form. But this is in its acidic form. It's plus. Okay. And this is in the base form. All right. That means it's all converted and this is gone here. All right. So with this, the overall charge is zero. I would remember that if I would be you. So let's talk about redox reactions. Redox reactions have two partners. One that furnishes the electrons 
and the other one that takes the electrons, okay? So the one that furnishes the electrons is being oxidized. The electrons are ripped off that one, it becomes positive, it's oxidized. And the one who does the ripping off or taking the electrons away of the other one, what does that? It takes the electron, it becomes itself reduced, okay? So the, if you have re a reduction, does the oxidation number, no, a number goes up or down? Down. If you have an oxidation, does the oxidation number go up or down? Up. Okay, good. So the loss of electrons is Leo, okay? And gain is, the gain of electrons is reduction. Leo goes Ger, all right? So let's see. We have a galvanic cell are made of two electrochemical half cells that are connected by an electro electrolyte bridge. So an electrochemical half cell, that would be an electrochemical half cell would be copper ions in contact with copper metal, okay? Or, and another electrochemical half cell would be zinc metal in contact with zinc ions. So you have that here, the zinc ions are in solution and they are in contact with zinc metal. And the copper ions are in solution and they are in contact with copper metal, all right? So the reduction, reduction is what? Is a gain of electrodes. So the re red cat is, reduction is always the cathode. Cathode goes on the right side, okay? Reduction is the cathode. So what happens? There must be electrons coming from this electrode here, and the copper takes these electrodes and becomes copper metal, and it plates out, it goes to that electrode, and puts more copper on that electrode, okay? So that's the reduction. You go from two plus copper plus two electrons gives copper zero, all right? Now, where do these electrons come from? So this is the oxidation. You have zinc metal, and it's in zinc sulfate solution, zinc two plus. That zinc metal goes in solution and becomes zinc two plus, but it leaves two electrons here on the surface of this uh, zinc metal. Now these are the two electrons that we can do, uh, have, to do, have to do some work. It goes over here and we can drive an a, a iPod or something or a light bulb, a small light bulb with this. And it, they electrons, after they have done this, they go over here and now they are available for the copper to get reduced, okay? So the red cat, the reduction is always on the right side. And which one will be the reduction? Will this be the more positive or the more negative potential? The more positive, isn't that right? Let's have a look. Uh, so that is, what did we say? We have copper, I don't know, yeah, copper. Copper two plus goes, comes from solution out and goes into copper. So that's 0 0.34 volt. And the other electrode is zinc. Zinc goes in solution, so it goes the opposite way so everything above goes to the right, everything below goes to the left. So copper gets reduced, okay? It takes these electrons, these electrons come from the zinc, so I have to revert that because that's written as a reduction and not an oxidation. So it goes this direction. The zinc goes in solution, takes out, uh, leaves these two electrons behind, and these two electrons go to the copper, and the copper picks it up and becomes copper metal. So what's the potential of this? It's 0 0.34 volt plus? No. Why is it positive? I have to reverse this here. You see that? It's written as a reduction, but it's actually it's an oxidation, so I have to reverse this, and I say it's plus 0.7. So it's plus 0.7 plus 0 0.34. This is 1.1 volt, okay? There it is, 1.1 volt. So uh, standard reduction potentials, are listed from uh, positive to negative potentials. Everything below gets oxidized, everything above gets reduced, okay? That doesn't have to be negative to get uh, 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 oxidized. It can be anything above. So gold would get uh, reduced, gold is very, very noble, and silver would go in solution. See that? It would go this way. If you have a one half cell is gold, one half cell is silver, silver plus, it goes this way. Which one 
is the cathode? Is gold or silver? Gold, red cat, reduction, reduction is cathode. Okay, so we do a little more the next time. All righty, thank you.